Let's uh, pick up on this discussion now and tributes continue to pour in for the late multi-award winning musician Bulelwa Mkutugana, famously known as Zahara, the guitarist and vocal artist passing away in hospital at the age of 36. She took the music industry by storm when her debut album, Loliwe, in 2011, hit the charts. The former record label owners, DJ Sbu and TK Nilza, discovered the song Stress from the Eastern Cape. DJ Sbu joining me now to reflect on Zahara's musical journey. Uh, DJ Sbu, thank you very much for your time. Let's begin with um, your reflections of when you met Zahara and link that to the moment she turned into a musical sensation that we came to know. So I'd like to say hello also to the viewers at home. Thank you for the opportunity to pass my condolences to the loving fans of Zabulera, to her family, her sisters, and everybody that really supported her work and everybody that, that, that loved her. We all loved her, and I'll forever miss her. Um, those memories are beautiful because it was around, um, I think it was World Cup, or Boutique, as I was working in the Eastern Cape at the time. There used to be a place called Talamanca, and they used to give a, an opportunity to young talent at Talamanca, and I would like to thank you all the way to Oyana for um, having had that initiative because young people, poets, singers, lyricists, and rappers, they would come to that Talamanca space, I think on a Wednesday or um, He is so happy to be here when um, Zahara was singing there with her guitar. And he called me around in the early hours of the morning at 3, he told me about what he was witnessing, and he told me that uh, he can't wait to make me meet this person. Mm. Um, for some reason, he, he, he organized to meet his family, and he organized to fly over to Johannesburg um, to put her through a mentorship with Musisin Tantra uh, Mahfu. Um, at the time they were married, she was uh, Musisin Tantra Lisa at the time, and she lived with uh, the Lizards for about a year. Uh, Musisin Tantra Lisa, as a lot of us would, would know her from the band Mafiki Zolo. She was on the road with Sister Chantra. She was mentored. She learned how Sister Chantra treats her fans, how she communicates with her fans, how she does everything on stage, the costumes, the singing, the vocal training. I would basically say she became Sister Chantra's um, baby girl. You yeah. know, as much as we did all, uh, as much as a lot of the times in public it was asked, but the person who did a, an incredible job in mentoring her at that time was Resistant Chandler. And then we started working on my project, which then I put out uh, a single called Lengo Man. I think that's how a lot of people introduced to her. Immediately when people heard her voice, hardly a week when the song was on radio, people were like, Sir Bono and I spoke, but who's this girl who's singing here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can't develop behind the scenes. We have been working on her album with the late great um, Robi Robi Malinga may so rest in peace, no putting Jake's um the producer on Charlie Fatel. Those are the guys that produced her first album. And then um the album came out in twenty eleven. Little think we know that um it's gonna be a, a huge success. But although we did believe in a talent we, we were blown away by her, her, her voice and just how humble she was and how much of a nice person she is. And she was somebody that we were very happy to work with when our relationship started in, 20, in 2010, but the album came out in 2011. Yeah. When South Africans remember her music career, what for you will be her lasting legacy? <laughs> The last thing you see is a great voice, amazing music, incredible personality, extremely talented young sister. Had a long life ahead of her. I really thought um, Zahara would be as old as the late great Abumama Mirem Makeba, may her soul rest in peace. I thought she'd be on stages up until around that age because her music is timeless. And she's one of those artists that just doesn't give you one or two songs in an album. She's one of those artists that gives you an album and you fall in love with the entire body of work. Maybe there'll probably be one or two songs that you don't like, but it's not, it's not common to find that type of talent. Um, 
Me and TK even had to travel Europe at some point. We traveled America trying to get it, to get an international deal at the time because we believed the world needed to experience the talent. She, she needed to go global at the time. Unfortunately, we were not able to get a, an international deal for her at the time. But also even myself, I had already been in the music industry for about a decade. So I, I, I left music to go to go into business around 20, 2012, 2013. But the, the few years that I worked with her, I want people to remember her for a, being a jolly person, full of life, full of fun. She was very funny. She would impersonate me, impersonate my voice, impersonate anyone for that matter, um, throw jokes around. Uh, she was caring. She was loving. She was kind. And it was just sad to hear that um, she had lost her life at such an early age. Yeah. Spoo, you will know life has its ups and downs and over the years Zahara has made serious allegations against your former company TS Records and this had to do with the claims that you and TK Niza had underpaid her for the work that was released under your stable. Is that something that you're willing to admit to today? Um, it's not true and I would like to categorically say in the public, I think for now, I would love to remember her for, for the great work. And I wouldn't want to get into um, conversations of business in terms of respecting the family and that it just happened. But I will touch on it and say, currently she was not working with us. She was with a Wana Music, which was her current record label. But to track back and talk about our relationship at the time, she we made sure that she owns her own publishing, which she does with Share Music Publishing. Share pays pays her royalties directly into her bank account, and they've done so ever since then. Ever since we've been we've been working together, and also with our, our current people that distribute our music catalog, Universal Music. We also made sure instead of um, Universal Music paying TS Records and then we distribute the funds to her. We decided in the beginning to rather have Universal Music pay her directly also. So it's not only the publishing company that had that type of an arrangement, even Universal. Um, uh, there is also documentation. There is contracts that are in place on paper. I would never do anything to do anybody wrong. The only thing I've ever done in the industry is to help other people. I'm my own man. I know how to make my own money. I am a hard worker. The only thing I've ever done was to contribute and help her succeed, which is exactly what I did. It is on black and white. It is on paper. It is on her contracts. And even when I stopped working with Sahara, when I moved on to business in 2013, she was doing well. She was on a tour. She had a net bank deal. And I was, uh, unfortunately, Mina, it was not just about her. I, I, at the time, I wanted to grow, I wanted to explore, I wanted to go start more fire. And then I went on to go start more fire in a company called Issue 2020. But as far as our contracts are concerned, everything is in place. Universal pays it directly. Um, share publishing pays her directly. I have heard of some of the things that she has said um, in, in the public. One of the things that I've kept quiet about that I have not said uh, and the public doesn't know is that um, Universal Music at some point, they made an exception. Instead of paying Zahara her, her, her agreed rates on the contract, mistakenly they would pay her 50% and they would pay the record company, our record company, 50%. And we only found that out just now a, cu uh, a couple of years ago, I think two, three years ago. So in, in, in other words, I wouldn't want to get into this conversation because she's just passed on. Mm. But just to let you know that... Um, the, 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 the story that was out there that we were owing monies is false because we were owed monies. But I don't think it's monies that I would have wanted. Uh, I moved on from the music. I went on to business. I love Buleno. And sometimes as she would speak, speak out, which is a good thing, she must, I, I would support her speaking out. But knowing that it would be, it would be false. I'd, I'd rather keep quiet most of the times and not entertain it and just hope that there'll, there'll be a time for us to sit down and talk and see how we can uh, mend our relationship. It's just said that she passed on before uh, that had happened. Yeah. But um, we, had not, we, we did not do anything untoward. Everything was according to per contract 
and our agreements together. And I would like to still stick to those agreements that were agreed to back then, even when she was still alive. The payments of her music royalties will continue to pay on to her directly. And that's basically what I have to say to the public. I understand that people are mad, people are angry. I'm okay. And I understand as a bigger brother, we've been in the entertainment industry for quite some time. We get to love our fans. We get to love our musicians so much as fans that um, anything that is to happen to them, whatever they say, you know, we get emotional. And especially now, she's just passed on. So people are emotional. People are mad. I got into social media. I see a lot of negative things and bad things that are being said about me. And that's okay. Yeah. Because I'm a bigger brother and I will take it. But I would like to say, may her soul rest in peace and may she be remembered as a one of the greatest musicians to ever touch the mic in South Africa. Yeah, Smu, I, I absolutely appreciate and I take to heart that this is a very sensitive period. But I don't think I would be doing my job either if I didn't ask you why she felt so hard done by by yourself, or should we say TS Records, the record label, if indeed everything was done right toward Zahara? Why do you think, why do you believe she gave so many interviews bashing I, the label I, TS Records? Yes, I, I, I don't know what would inspire that, who, you know, was working with her, who was saying what to her at the time. As I did mention earlier, that when we stopped working together, she had a great career. She she was doing very well. She had just released a new album. She was going on the road. She had a tour. And we did everything according to the book and according to the uh, contracts that were, were agreed upon. But um, let me also mention that the, the, the universal music... Um, Error that they had made to pay her more um, than what she was supposed to have received um, was not her doing. It was not her fault. But um, when Universal Music made us aware of that matter, we made our lawyers aware to let her lawyers aware legally so that it is a case a witness so they pass on the message of what the case was. But it wasn't also a matter of trying to say we want to recoup our money. No. The only other time that um, I would say we we um, we, um, we but in the only other time that I, I, I would say me you know, moving forward with my life doing my own things on the side not in the music industry I, I can't speak for what happened when I was not there you know I wasn't with her I was not managing her anymore we were not managing her anymore she had moved on she had started a new company she was working with other people. And I understand also that, you know, people would always track back to what she was saying. And, I, and that's why I'd never respond. But a lot of the times, I'd just keep quiet. I've only spoken about the matter once. But other than that, I was looking forward to an opportunity to sit down with her and have a chat. There has been an opportunity that almost came through our brother, Lucy Nova, who had called me and said, I would like to have a conversation with you. And certainly that conversation never happened. And I always thought it would happen if it happened. Certainly up until where we are, I've never had an opportunity to understand from Bulelo um, what, what had happened over the years. But achieve whatever she had to achieve in this industry, according to my knowledge. But uh, there was never anything untoward yeah. that any of us has ever done to her. And if, even if you know, the lawyers were to open up books, they will see or consult Universal, Universal will say that they've been paying her directly. Money doesn't come to TS Records as much as share music as well. And she also owns her publishing. But I would have loved the opportunity to have had a conversation with Sis Bulera. Certainly that opportunity never came. And um, seeing that you're a journalist and you pulled me into this conversation, I didn't want to get this far and discuss these matters only a day after she had passed on. But I also understand that we've got a responsibility to the public to also, uh, you know, mention what happened. Although you think it's still too soon, because of the production of Ubule, no one mentioned, then I turned that off from the phone, then I went off from Uti, and Kulume in such a manner, which puts me, or puts, you know, the family in a position where they, they have to, uh, you, you know, uh, she also has a current record company. They have not said anything. Yes. I just don't want to be that person who, who disrespects the family. Smoo, uh, and I have to tell you, I absolutely appreciate 
your honesty and how you're opening up about this. And yes, as I said, it is absolutely a very sensitive time. Perhaps as a way to close this chapter, therefore, I'd like to put to you this question. Do you know, now that TS Records is closed as a music label, the three projects that were released under this stable, who owns it? And in your view, would it be a sign of good faith if you were to hand over those rights to the family, to Zahara's family, as a way to say, this is us acknowledging and perhaps uh, paying tribute in the small way we can, much like you did with Pro Kid uh, in 2018 when he sadly passed. Um, we, we, I'm definitely all, all for for um, support as life goes on, and I would also be there to share whatever information that is needed from my side. I will also have to consult my business, my ex business partner, Mr. Nisa. I uh, will also have to consult with her current record company as well. But with her historical works, um, her works are there, her, her works is there, and her works is, is, is historical, and we did it together. And sometimes people need to understand that a business invests in an artist or it invests in a project that it believes in. And with her, we, we invested a lot. It's not only the from from the resources side. I think, uh, you know, Usis Umam, 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 not try to laugh. Her kindness in, in allowing Ubulela to be with her for a year and also staying at their home, that was also part of a contribution and an investment. And obviously those are discussions that need to happen, and, you know, considering all of those types of things. And considering that I also have children, I want to make sure that also when I'm born, my children continue benefiting from some of the works that I've done. But if everything that I've ever done, I give all of it away. Um, you know, I, I have to be very careful in how I I, 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 I make decisions, especially in moments like these, because you've got emotions where you care about someone, you've got into contractual agreements with people, but the good heart and good is still there. And I want to say there definitely is a possibility for that. Let me consult. And lastly, let me mention as well, Uti, when I was with the family yesterday, and our fellow musicians who came through to be that farewell. Thank you to Nazi, I saw with Businova was there, as well as a lot of other people who are in the industry that I can't mention all of them. Mm. The word was that um, tomorrow at uh, Rayma Bible Church, extending to big farewell to Busis um, Bulela at Rayma Bible Church. And then the final resting place will be in the Eastern Cape on the 23rd which will be next week, 23rd of December, we lay her to her final resting place in the Eastern Cape, where she comes from. But for those who are still in Johannesburg, would love to come and bid her farewell. Tomorrow we are meeting at 11 o'clock at the Rayma Bible Church. And I think I've said more now on this interview than I've ever said anywhere else in the past 10 years. And I think let's allow um, the family to be privately and Gabo Marapulu. And the South Africans, you, you must do this with everyone. I love it when you guys love you, you are, you are so much you love your artists so much so that you want to hold the people that they were working with accountable. Do that. I mean, I'm not mad at you. I understand you. We are all grieving. Hold us accountable. Hold record companies accountable. Hold music managers accountable. But also for musicians out there as well. Get your businesses in order. Get the right people to assist you. Get the right contracts done, which is exactly what we did with Ubulelo. And it is on black and white. And when it does get there and that time arrives, we'll definitely be glad to open up all the books so everybody can see. I'm very appreciative, particularly on the final score of holding record companies accountable. You are Absolutely spot on, Smoo. And perhaps as a parting shot, do you believe that as someone who has been in this industry for a long time and has been a record company owner, do you believe that musicians need to be taught a little bit more on the business side of things as opposed to just the talent? Because that's where exploitation really goes. I totally agree with you, Polani. That's exactly what I did with my life. 
You know, I knew that I'm not going to be young forever. I knew I'm not going to be running around on stages forever. And around that age, around that time, I felt when my daughter was, when I was inspired to get into business. So musicians need to understand business. They need to understand the business side of things. Even the fans. We love our musicians so much so that sometimes as soccer, soccer fans or music fans, we sometimes make um, remarks that are not informed by knowledge. So understand the type of deals that your artists get into. Because sometimes the artists themselves also get into certain deals and the public or their fans might not understand those deals. And when an artist says one, two, three, and four, it's easy for the fans to always say one, two, three, and four as well. So all you, my brothers and sisters and musicians and aspiring musicians, let's look at our books, let's look at the business side. But the easiest thing you can ever do is just two things. Just get an accountant. And just get a lawyer. Even though they're not an entertainment lawyer, but just get a lawyer and just get an accountant, someone who can do your books. As someone who's been through his own tax affairs and mistakes as well in my past, I'd like to tell younger guys, even the current musicians, get your tax affairs also in order. DJ Smoo, thank you very much for that advice. He is a former owner of TS Records. This is the record label that discovered Zahara. Thank you very much for sharing with us. And indeed, my condolences go out to you and those that you worked with when you unearthed this talent. Smoo, uh, thank you very much for your time. Yes. All right. Thank you for showing your love. Thank you for loving us since day one. Up until the last day, we we'll always appreciate the love and the support. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.